Good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Organic Bee Radio Show. Our podcast is available on iTunes, Zoom, and you can also visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. If you have any questions for our guests, there are many ways you can contact the show. You can post a question on our wall on Facebook, Skype us, send us a tweet on Twitter to at The Organic View, or you can contact me directly at June Stoyer. If you'd like to be on the show or would like to find out about sponsorship opportunities, please contact us at questions at theorganicview.com. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Today, I have John Schlimm, who's going to be talking about his latest best-selling book, Grilling Vegan Style. Now, many of you know him from the Tipsy Vegan and the Ultimate Beer Lover's Cookbook. So I would like to welcome back to the show, John Schlimm. Good afternoon, John, and welcome to the show. Hey, June. I'm so glad to be back with you and all of your listeners. Before we begin, can you tell our audience about yourself and how you made the transition to a plant-based diet? Because I think a lot of people that buy recipe books and whatnot, they, they're always curious about how people come to the decision and then go the distance. I mean, the recipes that you come up with are mouth-watering and are just absolutely amazing, but I always think that that's interesting to see how people find their way. Yeah, I I agree. I, I love asking different people because everyone has their own story. You know, I actually grew up the son of a butcher, and when I was little, uh, my dad had a meat processing business, particularly during hunting season, uh, wow. which is huge here. And it, it's always a hunting season here in Pennsylvania where I live, but he would particularly have it during deer hunting season in December. And, you know, as a child, you want to do what uh, your parents are doing. So I actually, at age seven, eight, nine, tried each of the jobs in my dad's business. And, and you can imagine uh, it, it didn't go so well. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad I had that experience, but I really got to see that side of the business. And I, I tend to think that my transition started then, even though I wasn't completely conscious that the transition was starting. But, you know, flash forward now a couple decades, and I started to become more aware of what was going on on factory farms. And uh, I started doing more research about factory farms and how these animals are treated. And, I, you know, I, when you come from a, a culture like I do where it's encompassed in hunting and meat eating, uh, it, it's really sort of hard to find the support, uh, you know, and the information that you might need. So I noticed on my plate, and again, almost subconsciously, that the meat portions were getting smaller and smaller, and the the vegetable portions were getting larger and larger. And of course, during this time, I I was writing cookbooks that weren't vegan, uh, like the Ultimate Beer Lovers Cookbook, which you mentioned. But then I read Jonathan Safran Feller's Eating Animals, which I'm sure a lot of your listeners are familiar with. And uh, there was one word And you and I have talked about this story before. One word on page 266, which did it for me. And on page 266, he talked about Thanksgiving turkeys and how mistreated they are. And he said, basically, these animals go through life unloved. And when I saw that word unloved, it sends chills up my spine every time I tell the story now. I, I... something just clicked. And I I literally got out a highlighter and highlighted the word unloved. I got out a pen and I circled it. And I'm like, I never want to forget that word because that is now my rallying cry. That's my rallying point. And basically overnight, I stopped. That was it. Done. So that transition that started in childhood uh, came to a climax with that one word, which actually also landed me on the Ellen DeGeneres show with Jonathan which was so fantastic to be able to look into that camera and into the eyes of millions of, uh, you know, my fellow Americans and sort of publicly declare, I'm no longer going to eat meat because I'm determined to make sure that these animals don't go through life unloved. You know, it's interesting when I listen to people tell me that, oh, well, they eat organic meat or they eat free range or this and that, you know, save it. I grew up on a farm. I fully know the process. I used to facilitate the process. And for for people to think that, oh, well, they're humanely raised and humanely slaughtered, the bottom line is is that death, no matter how you put it, it's, uh, it's still what it is. You're still basically eating the flesh of a living being. 
And it's interesting, just walking through the supermarkets, doesn't matter what supermarket it is, whenever I, I, I try to walk quickly past the meat section, it's almost like a freezer filled with dead animals. And at this particular point, I, you know, I'm not very aggressive as far as pushing my views on other people. I allow them to make their own decision and go through their own journey. But for myself, it's, you know, I just kind of, try to go in, get what I need, and get out. And it's always interesting to hear how other people have gone down, you know, the path and come to the conclusion that they have. Uh, and I think more and more people are understanding that when they're consuming animal protein, there are a lot of health issues that go along with that. And with the recipe book that you came out with, um, this latest book is just fantastic, and I have to say it's come at such a perfect time because I really love to grill, and I stopped grilling because I didn't really think that you could grill plant-based foods. And the recipes in here, I have to say, I I had to take a second look at some of the foods that I eat and you know, think, wow, you know, I can do so much more with it, and, you know, make it a little bit more interesting other than eating the same things day in and day out. So I just want to say thank you so much for all the wonderful ideas that you've presented and also the different varieties. I think the variety really is the key with anything, no, and no matter what you do. Well, I, I really appreciate that. And this book was such a joy to work on because there – uh, had never been a grilling vegan handbook and cookbook written before, and which I couldn't believe. And and the thing people, you know, I think are most surprised at when they look at this book, this is all just regular, wholesome, great food, the ingredients. You know, I, I, I pride myself in my vegan cookbooks that uh, on having ingredients that are what I call small, small town friendly because I was born and raised and still live in my small hometown. And I want my neighbors here and friends to be able to go to our supermarkets and on occasion the liquor store. As you know, some of my <laughs> recipes have alcohol in them. Uh, you know, and, and get the ingredients for my cookbooks just like my big city pals can. Uh, you know, I think so often we see these, uh, you know, vegan and other specialty cookbooks and they have ingredients, first of all, some of them you can't even pronounce. And, and second of all, some of them you need to go to, I don't know, an obscure health food store on Mars to find the ingredient, and that's not going to fly. I want everyday food that, you know, moms and dads can make for their kids, uh, you know, people can have for their parties. I want my books to be books that can be used every single day, whether you're a vegan vegetarian or not. You know, my books are parties that everyone is invited to and can enjoy. And the beauty of grilling is it, there's no longer a grilling season. You know, you can grill year-round, and I love it. Oh, and people do. It's very interesting. I, I've listened to friends that are in Arizona that grill year-round, uh, people even in New York that have grills on their, you know, right by their, their back deck or, you know, in the, in the backyard, and they'll go out, start up the grill, put the stuff out there, make whatever they're going to make, and, you know, voila. So you're absolutely right. Now, speaking of grills, what kind of grills work best for plant-based foods? I mean, can you use a George Foreman grill that you could plug in in your kitchen, or do you have any particular types of grills that you think work better? No. Any grill that's out there, any grill that you currently have, you can use for plant-based grilling. In fact, I have an entire section at the beginning of my book, because I always start with my books, I start from a place of, uh, you know, I don't care whether you're a new cook or you've been cooking for 50 years. I want to make sure everyone sort of is comfortable and informed when they're coming uh, to my cookbooks. So I have a whole section explaining the different grills that are out there and some of the things that you might want to take into consideration just in case you are a new griller and you're not really familiar with what's out there. But sure, you can use a charcoal grill. Uh, of course, if you're using charcoal, you know, I, I talk about uh, using additive-free charcoal, uh, in mm. the book, or, or uh, you know, in foregoing lighter fluid. There's nothing worse than when you're craving a really great grilled meal and you sit down and it tastes like lighter fluid, which, yeah, you know, it doesn't taste good and it's not good for you. Yeah. Oh, 
course, especially if you're going to buy all organic ingredients and then it's like, oh, yeah, great. I just added all these chemicals. Yum. Yeah, and, and you don't need to do that. There are things, I, I go through a whole list of different tools like chimney starters and electric charcoal starters that you can use. But sure, a charcoal grill works. An electric grill is fantastic. Uh, I love a grill pan. A grill pan, yeah, I think, is what, one of the greatest inventions, right? <laughs> those are very, very popular right now. Pretty much uh, every store has a fairly decent variety of different grills. That And folks, for those of you that don't know what they are, they're basically, um, it's like a flat plate, uh, flat, <laughs> help me out here. <laughs> It well, basically it, covers two two burners, I guess, and it's just kind of flat, and it has the, the griddle on it so that you can grill whatever. Yeah, or, yes, or you can actually, they have even smaller ones that are just like a skillet, but it has the, the ridges inside. So, you know, no matter how big your stove might be, you can find one to, uh, you know, fit your needs. But a grill pan is fantastic, especially if you maybe live in an apartment where you don't have a, a porch to have a grill. A grill pan is great. Of course, the George Foreman grills, which have really become rather iconic, haven't they? Mm. Uh, those work really well also. You know, we have a little one here at the house that you can put two veggie burgers on, and it's fantastic. You don't get that, uh, you know, smoky charcoal uh, flavor that you might uh, using a larger grill. But it's still fantastic. And, you know, the other thing I love about using a grill is I think it really uh, connects you more to the food because you're, I think, spending more sort of face time, if you will, uh, with the food, not only prepping it, but then, you know, standing at the grill. And, you know, grills are very uh, selfish sometimes. They like a lot of attention, so you need to stick close by whatever you're making. But you're, you know, you're actually interacting with the food and, you know, turning it and, and watching it become something really great that's going to nourish you. And so I, I think grilling almost can turn into a meditative experience, if you will. I agree. And it's interesting how many men love to grill. And it's not a sexist comment. It's, it's a fact. There are so many men who maybe they don't want to wash dishes, maybe they don't want to do the grocery shopping, but ask them if they want to grill something, and I don't know. <laughs> it just seems whenever I have any type of get-together, uh, there are always a couple of guys that will say, hey, if you need somebody to grill, let me know. And it's uh, it's nice to know that I have willing volunteers to help me out. <laughs> well, you know, I've actually gotten a lot of questions about that very topic, about the masculinity that is affiliated with a grill. And, you know, while I agree with what you said, you know, I, I've always been quick to make the point that I know a lot of women who can rock the grill just as uh, well as any guy. Uh, but you're right, and, and that was one of the great things about writing Grilling Vegan Style as well, is it it exposed a lot of men who I think, have been previously sort of hesitant about this mysterious vegan lifestyle to really see there's nothing mysterious about it. You know, I'm smashing through those stereotypes. Uh, there's nothing mysterious. There's nothing weird. There's nothing strange about it. It is good, wholesome food. And, and frankly, uh, you could sit down to a vegan meal, and if you weren't told this is vegan, you probably wouldn't even think about it until maybe a little while later when you think, oh, hey, there was no meat. And guess what? I didn't I didn't miss it either. I think with people that I know that are not vegan, when I introduce a recipe to them, I never say, oh, this is vegan. Usually what I do is I just bring it and I say, you know, why don't you try this? And they know that I'm very particular about the ingredients that I select and whatever it is, it's going to be great. So I, it's usually the afterthought. Uh, I find that if you say, oh, this is vegan, they just look at you like, really? Do I have to eat this? <laughs> it's like I think they would be more apt to eat liver and onions than something that's vegan. And I agree with you. Vegan has taken on some unfortunately negative connotations. And, you know, it is what it is. There are a lot of nutty vegans out there, but there are a lot of people that you would never know that they – follow a plant-based diet unless they told you. I mean, it's it's something that 
it's not something that really comes up into conversation when I meet new people. Uh, if they ask me about this and this, or if they ask me, you know, how do you how do you make chicken? Um, that's when it usually comes out. But people that know me well know that for me, it's not only a choice as far as consciousness, but it's also a health reason. I want to eat as healthy as possible, and it's a proven fact that when you're omitting the animal proteins, it's so much better for your body. Absolutely. And, you know, like I said earlier, I did not initially go vegan for health reasons. I went because of the animals. But I almost instantly noticed uh, improvements to my health. Now, I have to say, I was pretty healthy before. I, you know, watched what I ate. I uh, exercise every day. I, you know, I try to keep a, maintain a balance of mind, body, spirit, and that whole thing. But it was like once I gave up animal products, that all was kicked into a whole new level of wonderful. I mean, I was sleeping better than ever before. Uh, my muscle tone when I would work out, the benefits from working out uh, and combining that with a, a plant-based diet, uh, muscle tone better than ever before. My energy levels just skyrocketed. So, you know, I definitely, uh, being already healthy, noticed an even greater improvement. And you're starting to see now a lot of really uh, great professional athletes who are adopting plant-based diets, and they're doing fantastic on them. In the book Diet for New America, uh, John Robbins actually talks about that very subject, how professional athletes can do phenomenally well, and he named a bunch of them. I mean, it's an old book, but it's just the point that you don't necessarily have to have this this meat type diet in order to get the protein that you need, especially at the high levels that professional athletes require. And it's also interesting that you point that out uh, in regards to your overall well-being. Uh, I think one of the significant things that people notice is how clear their skin gets. It's just amazing. Their skin clears up. All of a sudden, all the issues that they have seem to dissipate. And that's most likely because the foods that they were consuming prior were contributing to all the different issues that they were experiencing. And, you know, the healthier you eat, you know, the healthier that you're going to be. Yeah, and I definitely noticed uh, with my skin. And, and, again, I try to take good care of my skin. You know, you everyone should be washing their face and exfoliating and using moisturizer and all that. But once I adopted a plant-based lifestyle, uh, there was a glow that wasn't there before. So it, it really is incredible. And I, I, you know, I, I would encourage people out there who are still hesitant about adopting this lifestyle, just give it a shot for a week, two weeks, and see. You're not going to be able to come back and tell me you don't feel differently. You don't notice a difference because you're going to. Uh, but it, it's a tough thing. You know, again, coming from the culture I come from here, uh, it, it, and I'm glad I do it, it have come from here, and I'm glad that I, I grew up, uh, you know, with my dad being in the business he was in because it's given me a really unique perspective as a vegan cookbook author now to sort of bring this uh, extra perspective to the table, this extra understanding, and really to reach across the aisle to meat eaters and hunters in a way that I'm not sure is always done. I, you know, I think in the past it was in the past it was sort of a, a us versus them type scenario, and it doesn't need to be that way. Uh, like I said, I want everyone to come to my parties. I want to be able to sit down with hunters and better understand their perspectives, and in, in that sense, have them better understand my perspective because I think that's how progress is going to be made. Because frankly, you know, these factory farms. For the most part, they don't care probably what you or I have to say uh, because we're not buying their meat product. In fact, to, to them, we're probably just a big nuisance. But they do care what the meat eaters and the hunters out there have to say. And it's those people who, when they learn what's going on on these factory farms, just like we're learning, they're outraged. You know, even though they meet, eat meat, even though they hunt, uh, they still and, – and it's an interesting psychological thing – they still don't like the just atrocious abuse of animals that's going on. So well, they have, I think they have respect the land. Yes, the yes, and, 
Oh, absolutely. And I mean, I'd love to in the future explore this maybe in a, in a future book or something, you know, how hunters and meat eaters uh, can be some of the most compassionate people towards animals, but then hunt them and, uh, you know, eat them. But, you know, my point here is they are compassionate um, on a very interesting level. And, and I think teaming up with the meat eaters and the hunters out there, that's where the progress is going to be made uh, to get something done on these factory farms. Because once people learn what goes on, no one wants to deal with that. No one wants to put up with that. I think as the level of consciousness continues to rise amongst many people in the world and people start to understand the value of the food that they're eating as far as their health. I mean, it's it's everywhere. So many people are making the transition. What doesn't matter what the reason is, but the bottom line is they become healthier overall. And there's so many different types of foods that you can make. And even in your book, uh, Grilling Vegan Style, you, you talk about some interesting options. One of them that I thought was fantastic was a recipe that's called romaine holiday, which I thought was really cute. And it calls for grilling romaine lettuce. Now, how do you prepare the romaine to be grilled? And can you also talk about some other greens that are great for grilling? Sure. I, well, you know, the romaine, it, that is one of the simplest recipes in the book. And it really is a matter uh, and this is how almost ridiculously simple it is, uh, just coating it with some extra virgin olive oil and some seasonings and putting it on the grill for a few minutes on each side. It is as simple as that. And I cannot, I, you know, I wish we had, uh, you know, we could share the taste of these foods through the airwaves because the taste of that romaine after it's been charred just a little bit uh, and with the olive oil is so phenomenal so phenomenal that, you know, people who don't normally maybe like salads or, or different lettuces, they're going to go crazy over this. Uh, in the same way, you know, I have a grilled watermelon salad in the book, uh, which I was so excited to put out there because, you know, we worked really hard to make sure that was a really great recipe. And people are just shocked. They're like, you can grill watermelon? I'm like, I didn't know you, you can, can grill watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I'm all for tossing anything on the grill at least once because I think you'll be surprised at how well uh, it turns out. And I thought, can we do this? Can we actually grill watermelon? Because it's of course, got sugar, I wanted. Why to... not? Absolutely. Uh, and again, just a, a coating of some uh, oil and toss it on, and it's really fantastic. Now, you don't have to leave it on very long, and you need to be a little careful because that water in the watermelon heats up pretty quick. But mm. put that with some arugula and some other greens, maybe some smoked paprika, and you have an amazing, amazing meal. I had thought about grilling the watermelon rind after I pickled it, but I would have never thought to actually grill wedges of watermelon. I thought that that was really great, and I'm looking forward to trying that at some point, uh, very soon actually. But there are so many wonderful recipes. Another recipe that uh, you were kind enough to allow us, as well as the folks from DeCapo Press, to publish the recipe for your seton recipe, uh, especially for any type of athletic events where you're having gatherings. It calls for hot sauce, and for those of you that used to love to eat the buffalo wings, this is a great, great alternative. Uh, but before we get into it, can you explain what seton is and how do you pick it? You know, what do you need to know before you buy it? Sure. Well, technically, seitan or seitan, there's so many different ways of pronouncing it, uh, is technically it's the gluten of wheat. So people who have issues with gluten would probably have to maybe go with the tofu or the tempeh, which mm -hmm. we'll talk about in a second. But the seitan is fantastic. Uh, you can buy it in, it comes just like in little pieces that you can pull apart. Uh, it, it For those who still crave that texture of meat or the flavoring of meat, uh, seitan in many ways and I can't say that I, when I use seitan, I don't even really think about this. Because I, I was one of the lucky ones. I, when I gave up eating meat, I, I, I didn't crave it. But I know some people have have issues with that. Um, 
but you know, it sometimes comes flavored like different meats. Now that's not necessarily for me, but someone else out there, they might want to look into those seitan flavors that are out there. Uh, but what's great is it can mimic. You know, everyone loves hot wings. Um, well, you don't need to give up the flavor of the hot wing. When you think about it, meat itself really doesn't have much flavor. It's what the seasonings that are put on the meat. It's the marinades that are put on the meat. So, you know, you can easily take the meat out, and when you slip in seitan or tempeh or tofu uh, with a great hot sauce like in the seitan flares, uh, it really comes to life, and you're n you're never going to miss those uh, hot wings of days gone by. Yeah, it's, it's the flavor. I know I loved very, very spicy foods, and unfortunately, most of them contained some sort of animal protein, and that was something that I hadn't really gone near. And mostly the protein that I've been consuming has been the extra firm tofu, and I was grateful to read all the different options that you present. Cause, you know, let's face it, uh, especially if you love food and you love eating gourmet style, <laughs> you really need to have the options in order to keep things interesting. Now, my next question is, in regards to tempeh, how, do, how should it be prepared? How do you select it? How long can you keep it in your fridge before it goes bad? Well, tempeh usually comes in a block like tofu, and it, it is actually a, a soy bean cake. So it's soy just like tofu is, but it's a lot firmer than even extra firm tofu. So it's a, a really great way to uh, prep it before you use it in a dish is to simmer it in maybe a vegetable broth or even water for about 15 minutes. And that just helps the tempeh to absorb whatever flavors you're going to be putting it with a little bit better. I love tempeh. It has sort of a, a, a nutty flavor, maybe even a nutty texture. Uh, it's really great to put in chilies. Uh, you know, I, I like just a straight vegetable chili, but if you, if you want sort of that texture, uh, extra texture of a protein, tempeh is great for that. In fact, I was just um, at the Sticky Fingers restaurant in D.C. I was down for the inauguration, and I, there's an amazing uh, chili there that they use tempeh in, uh, which was really great. So every once in a while, I'll crumble up and toss it if I'm I'm making a chili. It works great on the grill. Because it's so hearty, it holds up to the grill mm. really well. As opposed to, to seitan, seitan is wonderful grilled, but you ha it's a, it tends to be a little crumbly sometimes. Mm. So what you might want to do to sort of preempt that is to either secure it with skewers, uh, such as for the, the um, seitan flares, or use a grill screen or a grilling basket, you know, and you can easily find those uh, at your local, you know. Shop. Local department <laughs> stores or shops yeah. or you, you all know the stores that are there. You can easily find those ingredients or those um, tools. And I talk about those in the book uh, to give you a little more guidance on finding them. But, yeah, tempeh, it, it, it's, it's hearty and it's really fantastic. And it's packed with vitamins and calcium and protein and all those things that are really, really good for us. Thank you. Now, we're running a little short on time, so I just wanted to ask you one last question, and that's in regards to artichokes. Artichokes are such an underappreciated vegetable. Can you just share with our audience, how do you select them, and how do you prepare them for grilling? Well, you know, I think that uh, the best way to select artichokes is to really, you know, like you do any other vegetables. You just want to make sure that, uh, that they're firm, that they don't have, uh, you know, brown spots. You know, I know where I live, no one grows artichokes where I live. So, unfortunately, they have to come from far away. And we know all the sorts of things that can happen on voyages like that. So you just want to make sure that, uh, you know, they're, they're really beautiful and they're, they're plump and they look, as, look like they... Um, you know, are fresh and and not not you know. Old. Can you can you grill the frozen ones? I would tend to stick with uh, you know the fresher ones. I've never really tried, honestly, grilling the the frozen ones. 
But hey, give it a try and let me know. Like I said, I am all for experimenting uh, with the different recipes. In fact, one of the things that people love to do is they love to have a DIY kebab bar. You know, when you talk about the, the vegetables and the tempeh and seitan and tofu, uh, people, are, you know, at parties such as the Super Bowl, which is coming up, they'll set up a DIY kebab bar with, where they'll have bowls full of each of these ingredients and let their guests, uh, you know, fill their own skewers uh, with whatever selection they want. And even, you know, the different marinades. I have an entire chapter of marinades. You have oh, and they are delicious. Marinades. Yeah. Yeah, and you have a, you set out a few different marinades, and that way every guest can create their own and toss it on the grill, uh, and it just makes for a really great interactive party. And you know, I love when when the grill becomes the center of uh, you know the party where everyone's around the grill, uh, you know, enjoying a great cocktail. And of course, I, I have an entire chapter of cocktails. I couldn't leave those out. <laughs> uh, you know, and it just I think a grill encourages uh, just catching up and enjoying each other's company, which is the most important part of the process. John, thank you so much. It's been wonderful having you back on the show. And your book, Growing Vegan Style, 125 Fired Up Recipes to Turn Every Bite into a Backyard Barbecue, is definitely a book that's going to be by my side throughout the rest of the year. (laughs) And hopefully I'll memorize most of the recipes. (laughs) But so many different options not to mention all the recipes for everything from your own vegan Parmesan cheese to the different dressings. They're really so, they're just priceless. Thank you so much for including them and for just putting all the different thought into the recipes, especially for people that are still learning. I'm by far no expert. This is something that it's still a bit of a culinary safari for me. I'm still learning so much, and every time I speak to someone who really has everything down pat and just, you know, comes up with all these wonderful recipes, it's always great. But um, thank you so much, John, for coming on the show. Well, you're welcome, and I appreciate you helping me add sizzle to the world. And uh, next up, I'm working on the cheesy vegan. So it's going to be homemade vegan cheeses and uh, a lot of great dishes that it can be used in, and that's coming out this fall. So we'll have to get back together and talk about vegan cheese. Most definitely. And, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Please pick up a copy of John's book, Grilling Vegan Style. And by all means, continue grilling all throughout the year. The recipes will absolutely love. And also, you can check out two of the recipes, which are available on www.theorganicview.com. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. This has been June Stoyer with the Organic View Radio Show. Have a great afternoon, everyone. <laughs>